immediately open it up to you guys because we know you guys have been waiting. Who has a question? Don't everybody raise Nobody had a question. They're not wow. here for us. They're here for who's coming behind us. <laughs> well, that's good because you're the last one. So. Are we the last ones? Yeah. Save the best for last. Absolutely. No, we're here for you guys. Annabeth, what was it like working with Tommy Flynn? On Sons of Anarchy? Yes, of course, Sons of Anarchy. It wasn't anything like working with you, RP. <laughs> You're my fave. No, I love Tommy, Tommy too. It depends if I was a you know, different fan. Tommy's great. I did a movie with Tommy Flanagan. Speaking of Tommy Flanagan, uh, the <laughs> film is called The uh, Rising Hawk. It'll be out in 2019. Anybody else want to tell you guys what it is? I'm from right out to another one. My name's Robert Patrick. I play John Doggett on The X Files. Yeah. It was 18 years ago. That's right. And you apparently introduced me to my husband. You didn't know that. No. You can't think it was Chris Carter. I did. It was me. Okay, well, I'm going to give Chris all the credit, but I... I know. I've been reading that in the press, and I'm here today, right now, to say that you're inaccurate. Okay. <laughs> I was the one. Okay. Chris introduced me to Wade. Okay. Way down. Way down. Let me up. My Incredible problem of God. Uh, MMA fighter. No, he's not MMA. <laughs> Teacher See, of he's Frog Dog. He was a. Uh, was he? He was taught a, Frog Dog. Was he like a sheriff? Or, uh, was he a county kind of sheriff for a while? Yeah, he was a law enforcement. He's a badass. He was a. He was a. He was. He's a badass. He was, one of, one of, he was like a real John Wayne guy. And uh, I studied with him. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, he's Frog Dog. Yeah. came to visit the set. I met him through Chris. Okay. And he Chris turned me on to him. I started training with him. He was having a hard time with me at the film training me because I smoked like two packs of cigarettes a day. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. So I didn't have the energy to get through it all the time. But anyway, he came to visit me. I remember distinctly saying, Santa Beth, yeah, sure. You should know something. She, she's seen a friend of mine. What? Uh, you didn't know that. I don't. I don't really. Uh, I think you should. Just, uh, <laughs> that's how. Yeah. And I'm the sure rest they is history. Yeah. And you I gave Chris Carter all the credit. I'll, I'll give it to you, RP. I think they want to hear more about. John He's a big uh, stunt coordinator now too. He's doing a really big movie right now, isn't he? He is. He's doing a Taylor Sheridan and Angelina. Wow. And the show Barry. Yeah. I don't think they want to hear about my husband. I think they want to hear about John Doggett and Monica Reyes. Okay. Right? <laughs> Guys, I got a question for you. Yeah. Sure. First of all, it was a crime that John Doggett wasn't involved in the two final seasons of the X Files. It just didn't seem like it sewed things up properly without you there. I did, agree. Did, 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 did they ever talk about me? Like, when you're not, did you ever say anything? Like, <laughs> did, you, did you ever bring me up at all? No, but I never said anything. I barely said anything in the last two seasons. They I'm didn't sure. reference me? And then they dispatched you way too quickly, Monica. What was I that? know, I know. Although the bullet in my brain apparently <laughs> didn't kill me. I don't oh. Know. I <laughs> well, I guess my question is where do you think, if anywhere, the X Files goes from here in the state that we know it? I mean, I guess there's always a chance for a reboot down the road, but with, is it is it dead? I think it is. I mean, I think Jillian is, has been very vocal about the fact that she's finished. Unless they do a John Doggett, Monica Reyes spin-off. Right? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was uh, doing another show at the time, and there were inquiries, in all seriousness, to see if there was any way I could possibly do it, but there was just no way I could do it. I could, contractually, I was working for another network. And it was 24 episodes a year, so there was just no way to, uh, to make it happen. So the, the uh, discussion of me coming for those episodes was uh, shut down. I think everyone was disappointed. Just to 
Well, I'm happy to hear about that. I'm, I'm, I mean, I love all those guys. I love that whole experience. Uh, we did another pilot together before we did the X-Files. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah. Were the LA Sheriff's homestead? Yeah. Wow. Good we were, we were, we, it was me and you and uh, uh, Miguel Ferrer and That's right. uh, Dylan, uh, yeah, Dylan. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I have memories of that. Dylan Walsh, yes. Dylan Walsh, yes. I haven't had my privilege in the day. <laughs> Um, and I was under contract to uh, L.A. Sheriff Homicide when I got offered it. Wow. And then uh, Kelsey Grammer was the executive producer. And when they wanted me to do the X-Files, we had to, Kelsey had to do a, some sort of, he had to let me out of my contract and they did some sort of switch and some sort of trade behind the scenes and I don't know. Oh, I'm glad you did. Yeah. And then I, we were meant to be. There you go. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, I'm Jason Hignett with Warhound, and I've got something for Robert specifically. And forgive me, this is not X Files related, but I want to make this public because Warhound always wants to right the wrongs of horror. And uh, just want to let you—you you may already know this—but if you look on IMDb at the top, the highest body count in a film by a single character, this man doesn't make the list but it's an errant list. Uh, he is actually number four with, from the film uh, Behind Enemy Lines, 1987. Ooh, that was an epic film. <laughs> <laughs> you had 108 kills. Yeah. You, you ranked higher than Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. Um, the, there are only three people higher than you in, in cinema history wow. with, with, with body counts by a single character. So, we're here to right the wrongs of horror, and Robert, we want to make this public right now. So, top five, high spot of completion. Without bullets. <laughs> it was all blanks. Uh, film in the Philippines. Uh, I want to say like 1984. Six, eighty-six. Serial Santiago. If you guys aren't turned uh, hip to Serial Santiago, you really should be. He was a Filipino director. Roger Corman. Of course, you know Roger Corman, King of the Beat movies. That's where I got my break into the business. And uh, they sent me off to the Philippines to make a bunch of movies. You know, you, you might not even know this. Probably don't. Yeah, <laughs> we don't really care. care. <laughs> but it was like films. It, it wasn't like. It was my film school, and um, I learned how to be the lead of a movie and uh, carry a movie and, and how to hit my marks and do a lot of the stunts that I did. A lot. I did some of the greatest stunts I've ever done in my life in the Philippines, really risky in my life, with no stunt double, and I survived. But all those films, uh, uh, buying in the lines being one of them, led me to James Cameron, who himself had also started with uh, Roger Corman. And uh, that was my resume in a couple plays when I got T2, so it all, it all worked in my That was iconic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, behind enemy lines, I want to know who the guy was that stood there and counted all those kids. <laughs> Yeah. That goes through, I think, every movie ever and, and gets the kill count for each character. I, 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 you know, it's funny because that movie, I treated like everything. I mean, it's, it's a, I put my heart and soul into that thing. I thought it was like, I was working for, you know, big, you know, 30, 40 million dollar movie. I gave it everything I could, you know? And, uh, I remember I had fun, I had fun time making that. Did the X-Files? Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. To, to, to right the I, I'm thrilled about that. Thank you. That is awesome. Um, so I was late to the party. I'm the moderator. And I don't feel like I know you. I, you, you, I kind of took care of you in the last show that you came to. Yeah, you look real familiar. Yeah, it's the hair. 
<laughs> but um, I wanted to ask a couple questions and then give it out to the audience because there's a couple things I wanted to know. Um, and the first one was, with this show, it was the big flip because we had the, the female as the believer and the male as the skeptic with you guys. Can you talk about doing that flip from what was originally with Mulder and Scully with your characters and how you work with that with Chris Carter? That's a good question. It was, I, I loved being a believer and the female version of the believer because I naturally am one, I think, from a more um, spiritual, esoteric bent. Um, but it, and it was fun. Like we had, I, I don't know, are you a skeptic in real life? Probably? I don't know what I am anymore. I mean, I'm a believer in God, so I believe in a certain amount of mysticism. Old. Yes. And the universe is, you know, a very, very complicated place. We're all just stardust, literally. Uh, it's hard to say whether or not there really is something out there, and it's hard to say that there isn't. Yeah. So the possibilities are endless. I think one of the, the fact that, you know, male or female, believer or skeptic, that, that was one of the things that the show was excellent at, at examining, right? It didn't matter who thought what, it was just the exploration of both. And so we would have to really argue our points and you know my favorite episodes that we did in that season nine were 4D and Audrey Polly. Yeah that was great. I mean those were so good and, and just powerfully potent I think. Those are the ones that are most uh, fun as, as well for me because uh, the, the relationships and, and uh, the, the, the humanity of it all and I really enjoyed the emotion. Of those, uh, me those too. Episodes. Me too. Yeah. I'm kind of piggybacking on that. Belief in science was in the mix with this show. Mm -hmm. At being on it, did it have? Did you find yourself believing things or thinking about things that you had never done before? And then it kind of opened your eyes because that was such a big part of this in terms of science versus mysticism and religion. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, the, the, there's a uh, documentary or something and they talk about the Scully effects and how it's really positively imprinted women about scientific study. And I think that that's true, you know, I, I, I think it's very empowering. Um, I know I always put, after this last season 10 and, or whatever, 11 and 12, I always put a sticky post-it up on my, my uh, computer cameras because I'm like, someone's watching. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I have this thing, Instagrams. Are you familiar with it? Instagrams? Uh, you guys, you kids do that? Sometimes, I, sometimes I, I, I'm on my Instagrams and I'm, I'm talking to them. And then all of a sudden, pet food comes up. And I go, oh my God, I was just talking to my dog. They're tracking all of that. Their phone is following me. It's I don't know if it's aliens, but you know. I'm a, I did Fire in the Sky, too. Woo! Which, thank you. Which is one of the reasons Chris thought of me for the original role of Bud Miller. That's what John Dyer was originally going to call. Oh, really? I think he used that name later, did he not? In, the, in episodes that you did. In season, whatever that would be, 10 and 11. Oh, okay. Right? I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, and, and Fire in the Sky was an interesting movie because I met the people that it actually happened to. And one of them being someone that I was related to uh, through marriage. I have some Mormons in my family that believe in, you know, other worldly things. And, uh, one of them was actually a Rogers, and I played Mike Rogers, which was, which was sort of uh, an interesting uh, Mystical connection to my character. I think we're finishing each other's sentences. But, <laughs> that's because I, yeah, <laughs> stupid. No. That's, that's, anyway, so, uh, I believe something really happened to those guys, Mike Rogers and uh, Travis Walton. I believe something really amazing happened. Whether it was aliens, I don't know. But I've been up there on the Mogollon Rim. For those of you that are familiar with where this alien abduction took place, but it's one of the most uh, uh, 
it's, it's believable accounts by a community because there were six people involved besides this guy, and they all took lie detector tests and they passed. And um, uh, it's hard to lie about something. Mm -hmm. So going into the X Files, I was sort of open to the idea. But I mean, it's hard to say, you know, uh, even with science, like you know, what they're proving. Yeah. Well, kind of going along with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm always fascinated when actors create backstories and histories for their characters to help them get into it and um, figure them out. Did you do that with these characters and can you give us some of the details that you may have created on your own, in your own um, mind for them to be, in, to be, become them? Oh, we're like a real, like a mystical person. Yes, I have like five degrees in all sorts of religious science and mysticism. And I, I mean, my, all of my backstory was pretty well created by Frank and Chris, I think. I remember I was Monica Julieta Reyes. Reyes. Um, I spoke Spanish. I know because I had to have, to have a whole uh, episode where I was like, cocaina. <laughs> Mexico. You know that episode? Yeah. Michelle McLaren. Yeah. 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 That's a great episode. That was, that was one of the best episodes. It was, I mean, we had to do a lot. There was a, fair, a lot of action. Kim. Oh, that Vince wrote that. Yeah. Didn't Vince write that? Episode? So, yeah. And then Michelle McLaren. Directed. And they went on to do Breaking Bad. You know, yeah. that show. Vince Gilligan, the creator of Breaking Bad, was a writer on the Xbox. If you didn't know that. Good television. And then Michelle McLaren became a big executive yeah. producer yeah. for him. Yeah. But, but you were talking about... Uh, no, just that my backstory was, was very well presented to me by them. It's very sort of explicit. And, uh, yeah. Didn't you get hired on that show because of some pants you wore to the audition or something? Like that? The first <laughs> meeting or something? Isn't that true? Not that I know. No, I remember, I remember Frank Spotnitz and Chris Carter having a whole conversation about well, us about I know that Chris something you wore. I don't remember that. Wow, but I do. Um, I remember, <laughs> what kind of pants was I wearing? I don't know. I did remember Chris didn't like me in belts. He had a, a peculiar. Uh, he did not like Monica Reyes to be in belts. So I never wore belts in the show. It's very wow. oddly specific. That's handy. <laughs> <laughs> What about your character, John Doggett? Was it, what, did you create your own backstory? No, I, th I think they did. They said, you're a, you're a Marine. Yeah. You're kind of uh, an urban kind of guy that worked real hard to get himself through school, started as a, as a Marine and put himself through school. I think I went to like Syracuse or somewhere, mm -hmm. and then I got my, I worked real hard. I came from real humble beginnings, and, and, and then I had, a, I had a wife and, a, and Played my wife. Played by his real wife. Barbara Bench. Barbara! Who I love. She's amazing. She, yes, yeah, she's great. Thanks for saying that. Uh, <laughs> she was my divorced wife. And uh, we, we, got, we split up because we lost a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my son was abducted by uh, uh, a creep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, you know, he was abducted by some dude yeah. and then killed. And I, and, in one episode, I helped figure out who it was. Yeah, with Carrie, uh, Carrie oh, Elliott. Yeah. It was in that episode. Yeah, I, I, I love doing uh, The X-Files. My whole uh, memory of that was very fond. It was, um, we did, uh, it was like a little movie each week. It was we worked our asses off. I unbelievable. Mean, we would hours. work 18 hour days, Fridays would become Saturdays. I'll never forget one time we were shooting out in some place in the valley. And we, again. And we were, but there's a traffic jam. Yeah. And it was like 3 a.m. And Robert, you were two cars ahead of me, but there was some construction or something. There were semis and everything, and we were on this freeway. And I remember getting out of my car, coming up to your car because we were parked. And I'm like, what is going on? We didn't have cell phones at the time. Yeah. And. We were there for like two hours on the road. It was like the X-Files episode in itself, just sort of oh, yeah. stranded. Yeah, we, we, uh, 
we pulled some amazing hours. If you're working 18 hours, if, you're, if you start at like 6, well, here, you start at 6 in the morning, and then by the end of the week, you're going home at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Yeah. That's pretty, that's a pretty hard time to schedule change. Yeah. And I had 31 forced calls the first season I was on. The X ka ching, ka ching. That was back in the day when uh, they, they, paid they, they, they paid you cash. They they shot as long as they wanted. It was thirty one thousand dollars in fines that they paid. Wow. Yeah. But they had the money. Yeah. It was a hit yeah. show, and yeah. 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 that was great. It was great. That was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I have time for one more question. Why? Who's coming up behind us? <laughs> <laughs> Given the instruction. <laughs> so if you have a question, you raise your hand. My, you interrupted my lunch for this. It's I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt me. Just, <laughs> such a mess. Yeah. Um, so at the last X Files panel we had here a few years ago, I got to ask everybody um, what it was like to work with Kim because a lot of the essence of the show was so. Kick in the ass. So I was wondering if you guys could share any good stories about working with Kim Manners. Mm. He was a huge part of, he was a big advocate for me on the show, coming in new between Robert and Kim. Um, certainly the most sort of uh, supportive, I mean not, no, not to be negative about anything else, it was just, you know, they were just real advocates for me and for Monica. And he had the spirit and the energy of just, in a short little spark plug of a body, just you know, always, uh, we still, my husband and I, that's like our motto when I have an audition or something, he's like, kick it in the ass. Yeah, that's, when uh, I when uh, I got the role, uh, Chris Carter called me and said, that, I can't remember the name of the first two episodes, but it was like a two, a two hour, the first one went, and the second one were like together, so you could watch it as a movie. When, when my character joined the show, and Chris called me and said, I'm very excited because my, my, my number one guy is going to direct the first two hours, mm -hmm. Kim Manners, and you're going to love this guy, and he's going to help you set the tone for this character, and yeah. you guys are going to get together really quick. And then I met Kim, and I, 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 I was, I've never met a man named Kim before. I was, <laughs> wow, that's interesting. All right. And uh, he, he was a real little spark plug of a guy with an amazing amount of uh, passion for the, the, the X-Files and pretty much responsible for a lot of the really, really great episodes that have been directed over the years. And he was a very confident, uh, confidence-building uh, director that worked really, really hard to help you establish it and make you feel like uh, you were doing what was expected of you yeah. and helping you to achieve that and, and uh, you could just kind of surrender to his uh, directing and, and following me. It was fantastic. But he was, he was always like, you know, we're going to punch in, we're going to push in, we're going to yeah. come in, we're going to come tight to those babies. <laughs> you know, always, always. You yeah. just stand there and look cool. <laughs> well, one of the people, it was always like one yeah, of your face. Yeah, we right? <laughs> He's a great guy and he's truly missed by uh, His funeral everybody. was a very emotional... Well, and he had discovered, he had, I don't want to say he discovered, but he directed Johnny Depp. Yeah, that's right. And Johnny so Johnny was there, yeah. yeah. And uh, on Jump Street. Right. Yeah, so... Alright, I, I honestly, I guess I have to have this week the last question. I'm so sorry. Hi, how's it going? Good. Um, wow, what did you eat for lunch? <laughs> Uh, I cannot disclose that information. Um, I was wanting to know uh, who or what was uh, your favorite villain from the X Files? I mean, during your run. This one that always pops in my head is that guy that entered into the people's bodies. What was that? Uh, you know the one I'm talking about? That, what was it? Yeah. That little guy? What the fuck was that? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it was like... That was the weirdest <laughs> There were some that were out there. <laughs> well, I, I, I think...
think that's it. Thank you so much. Give it up for the cast of the